This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on today's episode, Jonathan is taking a look at Riot Games' hero shooter, Valorant. I do, I enjoy reviewing science fiction games. It sort of frees you up to look at the design aspects somewhat. The downside is it's very hard to find real guns from the Royal Armouries collection to show you. I'm just gonna show you this briefly. This is the ACR. We actually recorded so much with Jonathan about Valorant that we'll be publishing two episodes for the game, so make sure to subscribe if you want to check out the second episode later on. And if there are any other games, guns, or mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comments section below. Right, let's take a look at the guns of Valorant. Intriguing. This will probably be a trend, not a real gun, but it does sort of look and feel quite like a real gun. Looks like it might be made, or, or the receiver might be substantially polymer, which is, I think, never going away. We're probably stuck with plastic guns because it just offers so many advantages in terms of weight, cost, oh, and maintenance, certainly over the old wooden stocks and things much much better it has a bipod and a big old c mag on it so it's sort of a lmg-esque thing and it's absolutely spewing what looks to be 5.56 millimeter casings out of the side of it with very little recoil interestingly so i don't know if there's supposed to be some science fiction recoil damping thing going on there's no massive muzzle device on this that would allow that kind of control. Equally, I don't know if the player is supposed to be amped up in, in some way on this. But the thing that strikes me the most about this are the sights, because I'm always going on in sci-fi games about why would we have iron sights? Well, this still has iron sights. It has some very H&K style diopter-esque sights with a, a drum at the rear and a round protected post at the front. Albeit the post is sort of picked out in, in bright yellowish. But what's interesting is there's a device on the top that opens up and projects a holographic sight. Now, I don't know about it being mechanical and opening up, but uh, I am very much of the mind that we will have, maybe not built in forever, but hopefully <laughs> your gun would come with a, a stock sight that can be swapped out in future via some universal mounting system so opening up like a flower not sure about that but it kind of looks cool but definitely projected holographic optics fit my preconceptions of what a science fiction gun should be insta pause on this one because i want to see the the gun in profile maybe it's cheating i don't care so <laughs> you've got a lever action rifle but a very science fiction looking lever action rifle. Now I have seen a few, we haven't really got any here at the armories yet, but I'd like to get a modern take on a lever action, maybe a modern Marlin, ideally the one from Jurassic World. Uh, <laughs> this is more science fiction looking than that though, but it's not that science fiction, but the, the basic barreled action and the lever and all of that underneath the, the stock, absolutely standard. It's, now, this isn't any one type of modern lever action. It's, it's sort of a, an idealized version, but with the pivot point of the lever where it is, it's more like a Marlin than a Winchester, say. And then a tiny little scope on top, which does not look very futuristic at all. It looks like quite a first half of the 20th century, low power optic. So we'll see how that functions. This, the iron sights are very reminiscent of modern sporting rifles, again. Kind of racking my brains that this might actually be based on something. If it is, the stock isn't part of it. And that's kind of the overwhelming aesthetic <laughs> that we see. Defeated. Okay, I really like the feel of this. It sounds it might sound weird, but I think for those of you who played games, all of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand what I mean. It has sort of weight and the sound effects help with that. The loading, it all feels very plausible. I say feels very plausible because these are firstly pointed bullets, which are not a good plan in what is presumably has to be a tube fed gun. Problem being the point of one bullet goes up the back end of the one in front and detonates the thing in the tube and there's enough pressure containing ability within that tube for it to hold the pressure and then let it go and so the tube explodes in a shower of metal and plastic and pain not good uh, if you look at full-on rifle rounds for lever actions you'll see that they have a flat tip for this reason so that's one problem 
The other is that whatever these are, and they look like 762 or something similar, maybe a sporting round equivalent in power to that. They are too long, I think, to fit five in a tube mag. I could be wrong, but certainly from this perspective, um, looks like that's maybe a three round mag at best, I would suggest. Now, I'm always looking at how things might operate in real life, if these things are real, you know that. And this looks like it might. It's got um, a reciprocating bolt, like a, a browning or various other lever actions that use a um, straight fore and aft bolt rather than the toggle of the original Winchesters and a dropping locking block at the rear. The only thing that gives, that gives me pause for thought is that we seem to have a big old firing pin sticking through that block and I'm not sure how that would work in reality, but it may just be that I haven't had enough caffeine today yet. Now, what looks like a very straightforward pump action shotgun is really quite interesting. Um, I had to watch that a couple of times, but um, we have in our little shooting range demonstration, this is, this is the only way that clicked for me. We've got a, mo a firing mode, an alt fire, where it shoots almost like a rifle, but then only after a certain distance does it burst into a pattern of shot effectively. So it's almost like a way of carrying your buckshot to a further distance, but still having that spread effect. I don't think I've seen that before. That seems new to me. And the ability to do one or the other, it's not like you're locked into a shotgun that only works that way, such that at close range, if you would, wouldn't get the spread, <laughs> but at but longer range you would, so you'd have to use it like a long range gun. This means you can use it either way. Now, for some reason, it's reminding me of the um, old flintlock knock volley gun, which I always think of as a way to do the same thing, to carry uh, a pattern of shot much further out. We didn't have our modern ammunition technology, so they instead braze seven barrels together to create a pattern at maybe 100 yards, something like that. And this seems to be a way of achieving the same thing, albeit this is made up. But something new and different, which for a pump action shotgun in a game is pretty hard to pull off. Otherwise, it seems pretty standard, but let's have a look at what the effect is. Gotcha. Spike down A. We've got some, some rounds in the shell carrier that um, and I don't think this has a practical effect in the game, but some are facing one way up, some are facing the other. Now, I've seen people use that as a way to not only visually, but um, in a tactile way, work out which rounds are which in their shell holder. So if they're trying to use slugs or buckshot, they know that their slugs are one way up and their buckshot's the other way up. This is probably just a visual reference taken from a real gun and that may or may not have been what they were doing. Doesn't seem to be what they're doing in the game mode. And of course we have a, a, a highly cosmetic safety on the top of the action. Um, why would we use that in a shooter? Right, um, this is a bit of a trend with with your science fiction video game shooter is you can see or you can you think you can see influences. Humans love pattern recognition, me included, and we will try and say that's that's based on this, that's based on that. Sometimes you don't know unless you ask the developers because as in this case, I, th I think I'm safe to say that the barrel assembly and the slide of this must surely have been borrowed from the Desert Eagle, but they've changed enough about it that this no longer actually really resembles a Desert Eagle. They have scaled down that massive barrel to a distant cousin of the Deagle, I would say. Uh, but it almost makes it look more like an Auto Mag or a Wildy Magnum, and it has a suppressor relatively futuristic looking, although we already have big blocky suppressors like that. Uh, so the controls, yeah, the controls again look like they've been translated over from the Desert Eagle, although the mag release is, again, different. So it's sort of the mullet of, of video game pistols. It's got Desert Eagle on top and something else down below. That's not a very good analogy. Let's see it shoot. Yeah, it's an intriguing weapon. It's got all those Desert Eagle design cues, but the scale of it, the fact that it has a suppressor and the way it's being used, it comes across more like a futuristic high standard, more, more sort of sneaky beaky and slimline. The other little detail I noticed is that the rear sight stays put. Now there are on um, sort of custom 1911, 2011 pistols, design called a sight tracker, where the front sight is part of the barrel assembly and the whole 
the rest of the slide reciprocates, this has a rear sight tracker. So instead of the rear sight being part of the slide assembly and it moving back and forth, not really a problem at, at pistol engagement distances for accuracy. This must be reaching for that extra accuracy by keeping both the front sight and the rear sight in place in space, if that makes sense. Obviously recoil will make them both move, but relative to each other, they're not moving like a real Desert Eagle, for example. I do, I enjoy reviewing science fiction games. Well, this one I've got, I focus quite a bit on uh, how things actually work, but in general, it, it sort of frees you up to, to look at the design aspects somewhat. The downside is it's very hard to find real guns from the Royal Armouries collection to show you. I'm just going to show you this briefly. So this is the, I'm sure some of you already recognize, this is the ACR, this, um, and I mean this in a, in a, I don't mean this in a critical way, generic, futuristic looking assault rifle. And it actually has design elements of the SCAR a bit. The only thing I could really put my finger on actually would be the, the magazine, the bumper floor plate on that magazine and the design of that magazine looks uh, very SCAR. We can, we can point to at least one design feature. This fence around the magazine catch is very reminiscent of the Phantom here and the general lines of it, but then to be fair, the HK433, uh, the SCAR, as already mentioned, Bren 2. We are sort of converging on a fairly standard AR-15 ergonomics, AR-18 gas system, polymer lower receiver, aluminium upper. I mean, I don't know what the what um, Valorant's guns are made out of exactly. I think there's a lot of polymer, but it's a little hard to tell. It's a reasonable take on a near future-ish infantry rifle because hey if they already look like this why wouldn't they look like that in however many years now a couple of years ago something popped up called the ak alpha with an f to modernize the ak with a, a more modern architecture and there are a couple of other attempts that are probably going to become more significant. So rather than a U-shaped metal receiver and then a sheet metal top cover with all sorts of problems for making that robust enough to mount a, an optic on, you go for a two-part upper and lower receiver like a lot of other designs. And this has done that. However, it hasn't taken full advantage of that advantage. <laughs> it still has very AK-esque lines on the top and it has just a cutout for a rather limited sight option. In fact, it's just our, it's our generic holographic sight that we see throughout the game. That would limit what you could mount on the gun. That's why you normally see long strips of rails on the top of a rifle so that you can put more than one sight on there if you need to, uh, thermal, infrared, or you can mount one sight further to the front or the rear depending on your eye relief, your body shape, all of that. Um, now we also have what at first glance looks like quite a modern buttstock, but doesn't really look to have any adjustable features. And that's that's a big no-no right now. It's a very AK magazine, almost identical to an AK magazine, I would say. And the curvature looks up like 7.60 by 39. And now to be fair, that AK caliber has never been. And it has a very AK-esque, actually it looks a bit galili at the front with that gas block with the sight mounted on top of it and a take on the AK-74 muzzle brake with a, with a few liberties taken. Overall, very recognizably an AK, but it has that sort of AK Alpha, Galil ACE, modernized look. 10 seconds left. Right, we've got some sort of a variant design of this thing that looks radically more futuristic, more science fiction. Even this though, still has a hint of the top cover release button that's on the back of the AK to remove the top cover. Now, neither of these designs need that. So it's, this is a trope of video game gun design and probably other thing design too, where design cues get abstracted from reference images and placed somewhere on a weapon and then melded into the design. So you can go, oh, that looks like that. But it doesn't have a functional 
purpose. Now, the base design looks like that button might do something. We don't know what, but it is a riff on the, on the release catch of the AK top cover. And then this more advanced looking version, it, it really is just a sort of design feature aesthetic design feature like like the lines of a car body it, it doesn't do anything for the gun itself as far as i can see still uh even even firearms today their receivers can and are can be and are designed for aesthetic reasons the, the, the ability to put a barreled action in a shell effectively means that your outer body can be whatever it needs to be we're seeing that from everything from the Tavor onward, the F2, F2000. Uh, the HK433 is, is essentially a part of the reason for that redesign is so that it looks cool and futuristic. So it isn't just games that, that do require aesthetics. Spike down B. All right, those were the guns of Valorant, a totally new uh, look on me. Always fun to go through. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you'd like to support the work that we do at the Armouries, we'd love you to come and visit one of our three sites if you can. You win, we're in the UK, so that's a problem for some of you. Um, otherwise, check out our website, our various social media outlets, and of course, I will see you again next time.